What's poppin' everyone? This is Alan with I Dream of Indie here with a review for the newest contender in the heavily saturated roguelike marketplace, Crown Trick. Developed and published by Next Studios and Team 17 Digital, does Crown Trick have enough tricks up its sleeve to stand out amongst the competition? Well, let me give you a spoiler warning. This game is absolutely amazing, so with that, let's take a look. First of all, this game is gorgeous. As much as I do enjoy the pixel art retro style, it is quite refreshing to play a game where the character and NPC designs have such a nice hand-drawn aesthetic to them. I also felt like the animations were smooth, and despite this being a tile-based roguelike, everything flowed so organically that I often found myself trying to approach this like an old-school action-adventure akin to The Legend of Zelda. Every enemy, item, skill, and weapon have a unique animation accompanying them, and they utilize the tile-based gameplay system incredibly well, making tracking movements relatively easy once you get the hang of the controls. While not overly burdened with cutscenes, the few I came across during my time playing served to enhance the experience and remind me a bit of a hat in time. And if you're not familiar with a hat in time, this is extremely high compliment. The sound design and music work well within the game, fitting the dungeon-crawling roguelike aesthetic quite well, and overall serve to create a fitting ambiance. I wouldn't say put this on my OST playlist anytime soon, However, I never felt the urge to turn it off, and thankfully, the heartbeat sound you hear near death is leaps and bounds better than that of the high-pitched screeching made popular in titles like Legend of Zelda. From a presentation standpoint, I don't have any complaints. The characters all look unique, all have their own animations, and stand out from each other during the course of play. Obviously, the most important aspect of a roguelike is the gameplay. I love dicey dungeons, and you literally play as a dice block, so I don't need AAA graphics to necessarily enjoy a title. Gameplay here can be best compared to Cryptid and Necrodancer, Except, thankfully, you aren't moving to a beat. Every action, both character and enemy, is tile-based, and this also includes your attacks and skills. Every weapon has an attack range or pattern it follows, and you get ample opportunity per run to swap out weapons. I prefer the broad axe, personally, as it hit every tile surrounding my character. You have to figure out the best way to approach enemies in each room while minimizing damage received. You do have the option to skip turns in order to force enemy movement to best line up with whatever attack pattern you're using. Along with your weapon, you can pick up items that have buffs, debuffs, or attacks, and as you defeat randomly spawning mini-bosses on each map, you unlock the ability to use their skills, adding an additional depth of elemental-based attacks and dodges. Again, it's up to you, the player, to figure out how to synergize these maneuvers to best fit the dungeon in your playstyle. You also get limited regenerating resource called Blinks, which allow you to teleport around the arena in order to avoid telegraphed heavy-hitting enemy attacks. You aren't alone in this fight, as you are assisted by the titular Crown King, who recharges mana and blinks from time to time, as well as randomly spawned artifacts and relics that help enhance and buff your various character traits or abilities. Again, it's kind of trial and error here with figuring out what combination synergizes best for the optimal outcome. Peppered throughout the various dungeons are NPCs that you can rescue, who show back up at your base of operations, offering various upgrades to purchase depending on how many crystal shards you collected before you died. Speaking of death, this game is incredibly difficult, and you are going to die a lot. Having a progression system to feed currency into upon death does help alleviate the pain and frustration of getting face rolled over and over again. Enemies require strategy. You cannot succeed if you treat this as a hack and slash title. I made this mistake as the controls do feel a bit stiff and wonky at first. They are pretty easy to get used to, however since the animations were so smooth, I kept tricking myself into treating this as action combat. It's not, so make sure you slow down and plot your maneuvers and execute accordingly. You will never beat a dungeon boss if you try to force your way through it. Trust me, I died about 20 times on the end boss of the first dungeon. The good news is that enemies only move when you do, so you are afforded all the time in the world to plan your attack. Once you get comfortable with the system, the game is a blast to play. It does include a bunch of options to customize the controls to whatever you're more comfortable with. It took me a good 90 minutes to really grasp everything the combat loop offered. Once I got the controls figured out, I started having a lot more fun. So the controls aren't a bad thing here though, so just be prepared to remind yourself that this isn't The Legend of Zelda, and just stop and plot before you die. If it isn't obvious by now, I can't recommend this game enough. If you're a veteran of roguelikes, you will find a lot here between the item customization options and the progression system. While deceptively difficult, this game is also great for casual players, as death is not as defeating as it is in other games of the genre. There's a bit here to appease any type of gamer who enjoys roguelikes. With a gorgeous presentation and fulfilling gameplay loop, Crown Trick is what I feel to be a must-own title. With it currently available on Steam, which is the version I played for the review, as well as the Nintendo Switch for under $20, this game is an absolute steal. Having said that, this has been Alan here saying sayonara, and I'll see you when I see ya.
What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Alan. I want to thank you again for tuning in to another one of my videos. You can help support I Dream of Indie's mission statement to bring a voice to the voiceless in gaming by subscribing to the channel, hitting that bell icon, consider becoming a member, and if nothing else, check out another one of our videos.